Hi, I'm, this is Eric Stromquist. I'm here with Daryl Smith from Microsoft. Uh, Daryl just gave a presentation at the Ibicon Boot Camp. Just totally blew me away. Uh, Daryl, you just got a few square feet under that you're taking care of, right? Yeah, just a few. It's uh, 15 million square feet, um, 145 structures, and 58,000 house heads in our campus in Redmond, Washington. Yeah, so that's a lot of real estate. Now, what, what had you guys get on board with the whole building automation thing and, and the energy data revolution? So, so we are really paid to optimize our budget and continue to look at cost savings. And for this, it started with a business problem. Uh, we're looking at how do we lower energy and be, become more sustainable and lower our carbon footprint. And so we're connected to 2 million points. These are all the, the data points that are flowing from all the, the pieces of equipment, the assets across our campus. And in a 24-hour period, we collected half a billion data transactions. And, and this is big data we historically had done nothing with. And, and so we thought, boy, there's, there's got to be a way to use IT in our buildings. And the value is, is it's seamless to the occupants, meaning a ten of improvement, would have, I would have had to have building shutdowns and lab shutdowns. Um, and it's a fraction of the cost. And in fact, the, what we're seeing is a payback in less than 18 months. And Microsoft or Washington State is the third lowest energy cost state in the nation. And you guys are still getting that much payback. That's amazing. We're, we're, not only that, the utility is rebating the software, the, the deployment, and some of the IT costs because this is replacing our retro commissioning program. So the ROI statement is, why haven't you done this before? Well, you made a very interesting statement in your presentation. You talked about faults being invisible versus alarms. Speak about it. About that. Yeah, so historically, fault detection has been around for a long time, but it hasn't been implied, applied to buildings the way that, that we're seeing it applied today. And if you think about a building, if there's a large air handler that's on the roof that accidentally turns off or for whatever reason um, turns off, then the people in the building start getting warm, the facilities team see um, the alarm from the equipment. It's very visible. It's in, it's in your face. And, and we react to that. For fault detection, it's invisible. It's being able to look at all the assets across campus. We have 35,000 mechanical assets. And to detect when they're not running as design when someone's made the set point. And the quicker you detect that, the sooner you save money. Yeah, you were telling me that you, when you first started collecting the data and analyzing and doing the analytics that you thought maybe you get a 20, 30 percent payback. The fault, picking up the faults totally, I mean, that, that was a total underestimate. Correct? It, absolutely. In fact, um, I'm a big fan of LEED, so USGBC LEED certification, but we are finding that our LEED buildings were the ones that had the most opportunity for improvement. The ones that had the plaque in the, in the lobby, that's because commissioning practices today don't go deep enough in the building and don't address it in a way you can do with, with having the IT, with having the data in your hand. Um, it, it really has been a game changer for us. Well, and what about our people out there who maybe worry about the cost of implementing one of these systems? I, I would say the jumping off point for each customer is different and depending on what they're trying to achieve. So, so are they after just understanding their energy use? Is that really the, the fundamental thing they're trying to solve for? Are they really trying to optimize their assets and drive energy costs down? And so the cost is relative to where they're jumping off point. But if you think of it relative to a tent of improvement or a rip and replace, the ability to extract data from all the existing buildings um, onto a common platform is a fraction of the cost. So showing that in the third lowest energy state cost in the nation that we can 18 month ROI or 18 month payback, imagine what we would do in a higher cost area. Fantastic. Um, to our people out there who maybe haven't gotten started, Daryl, is there anything, I mean, sort of the first step, second step, third step, best practice? What do you think? So for us, uh, we, we really started this whole um, journey by writing our requirements. Everything from what did we want to um, be when we grew up, what reporting did we stop doing because it's just too labor intensive that we felt was very important. What new reporting did we want? And, and having an understanding, we came up with 195 requirements. Um, and that really was the anchor to our strategy. We looked at our gap analysis, so what did the campus have? Uh, was there anything that we need to shore up on the IT side for connectivity? And luckily there wasn't. And then we just did an RFI, RFP, and we decided to do a three vendor pilot for a year. Because I really, this is an emerging um, technology and we really wanted to test the vendors out there and, and that's where I really found that I was underestimating 
some of the power of IT and the ability to use fault detections to optimize our campus in ways I'd never imagined. So did all three of the vendors shake out? Did you wind up with three? Is that pretty much how it works for you guys? So we, we got down to three um, in there. The end of that, the one that best met our requirements was a company called Iconic. So that's the one we invested in, but that's the one that met our requirements. Other people's requirements might be different. So you have to really look at um, what, are, what are you trying to achieve, what's your maturity model, and, and really pair that with the vendor that best meets your need. Okay, now we're going to test Daryl here a little bit, okay, because what's the point of having data if you can't make predictions? So here's a test, okay. Seattle Seahawks record this year. Are they going to the playoffs or not? I hope so. I, I think we'll go 10 and 6, get in the playoffs. And take, hopefully... a, take Atlanta out this time? It's going to be, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a showdown. So. Percy Harvin's good move, bad move. I think it's a great move. My guest, Daryl Smith from Microsoft. Daryl, thank you so much. Thank you very much.